Okay, so many of you have seen the video of me taking apart the piano, and now I'm gonna be taking parts of the piano that I didn't use for the table, and I'm gonna try to turn it into something interesting, uh, like a small cabinet. And at least this will be part one. Uh, the tools, I'm gonna be doing this in a pretty loose fashion, so the tools will be just a speed square, measuring tape, and a pencil. I've got my rigid set of tools for a you know, skill saw um, and some basics, but it's gonna be pretty rough. Uh, you also need a, a nice mom in the background pruning, as well as your dog. So those will be important parts of the, of the mix. As you can see, there's Mackie Dude, helping out with everything, making sure everything is supervised. And I've got a lot of other parts from the old piano there. Those are the old sides. It's the old Lowry that I was working on. There's the old bass, and that part there is where all of the um, all the keys were mounted. Or sorry, not the keys, but a lot of the mallets were on that board. So this board, I'm going to take apart, uh, take all those parts off, anyways, and then cut that board down which is a pretty heavy plywood like inch and a half of different I'm sure they use some woods that resonate in some fashion So ran into a little bit of trouble with the flathead screws that are in the wood. They're, you know, long screws and they're old. So you can imagine, and I don't have my impact drill at the moment, so that's hurting the situation, but these old flathead screws aren't coming out too easily. So what I'm gonna do is pry, uh, pry the wood right off, free them up a little bit, and if I can't get them out after that, I'll just cut them off and leave the metal in the wood, which might actually give it kind of a cool look. old shims I'm just gonna get rid of. Well I'm gonna start a fire. Okay, you can burn them up. Will will it bother you? What if the smoke blows your direction? Oh no that's fine. Oh, uh, that's fine. So just using a wrench at this point and that's actually pulling them out okay. I'll have to do the same thing for these pins because they don't have a Phillips or a flathead access, so those are just studs that are just screwed right in with a bit that I definitely don't have, just sort of a square bit. I'll show that in a second. So they're coming out okay just using the, the wrench. That worked out okay, so I was able to just pull them right out. So again, whenever you're using a wrench like this, you can see how the teeth work. They're pulling, you want to pull away in this direction and those teeth will bind in this direction, right? So when you bind down on it, like any old pipe wrench will do the same thing. You want to pull in the opposite direction of the teeth, which will be what would loosen that out. So lefty, right? So you can see how long those are. And there's no access, uh, there's no Phillips or flathead on the top. So this is kind of the only option. Typically once they're wedged in, once it's wedged in like that, you can actually just push on the top edge. The other part will stay bound by that pressure. So you don't have to actually clamp both. You can just clamp one, or just hold on to one and put pressure on the, the top side. So you can see I'm just using the one hand. And I always recommend saving these for some other project down the line or to use them for artwork or something along those lines. Then hard on it. And then as long as that pressure stays on, you're gonna be able to rotate all the way around and not have to use grip both of them. So you can get leverage and just rotate 
all the way. All right, you can see these little pins that I've been ripping out. So again, you go flush to the wood. I'll do it in this direction. Flush to the wood and then use the wood as leverage to roll that out and it'll pop these right out. This is what happens when you're working outside. Don't do what I just did and put something down on the grass. You'll never find it. So now that I got most of the wood pulled apart and I've got most of the metal out, um, now I want to plan sort of how I want to make this into something that's usable by using just the wood that's here. Um, so the general plan is I'll sort of lay out the, the wood and then what I'm planning on doing is taking the sides uh, and parts of the middle of it to, and then trimming them down quite a bit in the middle to make somewhat of a, like a stout, taller cabinet. Um, and then use the lid from the old piano, cut that down, use those same hinges and have that be the top. Um, and you know, it won't be like the most amazing piece, but it'll be something interesting. And when you're doing a project like this, it's always good to keep every single piece that you have because you never know what this will end up turning into. And as it turns out, I'm probably gonna turn this into a bench because it makes complete sense to make it into a bench. And once you start putting things back together, you say, why wouldn't this be a bench and why would this be a cabinet? And it'll actually be less work to make it into a bench. So that's what I'm gonna do. But again, if you don't have all your pieces, then you're not gonna be able to easily see that when you start messing around with the parts that you have left. So always keep everything until you're done. This is gonna be cool. Come a little towards the uh, to your left. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Wow. Whoa. Cool. It's almost a little too high. I could cut the foot down another couple inches. And then I gotta figure out. So probably what I'll do is I'll probably cut the back off to make it sh more shallow. And then find a piece of wood to put in across the back. But I should have something that'll probably fit. This might fit inside. That'd be, if this fits, wow, that'd be too perfect. But it might be too long. Uh. It's almost well. You're probably you're probably going to be pushing it together a little bit. That'll be a good back, though, right? I it can, would. I yeah. can do it like that. Yeah, I would do it on, on a little angle. Yeah. I need like a spacer, a little piece of wood spacer. I know. So it's actually exactly what the width is of that. Yeah. So actually, in them, it will fit. Yeah, I think it will too. So at this point, I have a pretty good idea of how I'm going to put this together, thanks to my mother's help. Um, we have uh, a little bit, the height is a little bit too high on this bench with the total foot there, that's 23 and a half. And I'd like it to get down to about 22 and a half. So maybe I'm going to take about an inch off the foot, the original piano footing there. Because it doesn't need to all be there uh, because it's not as heavy as it used to be. And then wood glue the sides onto the base on the back. This is a really solid piece here. Uh, so the general construction of the original piano is really good. Um, this was the original part that covered underneath for the piano, uh, covered all the, the pedals and everything underneath. I'm going to use that for a backer, for the back of the bench. Uh, I'll need to cut that down a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to probably use the old lid to cover the back of the bench. And then the last part is on the back side. I'm gonna cut off the old particle board pieces off the back here. So make this more shallow on the back. And then the other part that I'll need to figure out is to space this one piece is about an inch thinner 
then um, the backer piece that I'm going to use is about an inch thinner, so I need to put in a piece to fill that gap, the one inch gap. So I just get basically a, a true one by um, to fill that, and I'll only need to fill it to to about here. And then I'll put a brace across the back of a solid piece of wood uh, that should keep it pretty stable from wobbling side to side. But I think once it's all screwed together, again, that's why you want to keep all the old screws that. You know, the old screws that are in these old pianos are really nice, big, long, nice screws. So um, keep all that stuff until you're done. All right, so one of the other things that you need to do is figure out the angle of what the back is going to be. This is going to be further back, but I want to find out what angle to have this at. So I think this is a good angle. This all will be back another four or five inches. Uh, but I want it to cover that hole on the back and actually I won't even need to remove the felt because it's going to be buried behind everything so uh, But that's where I marked my line So that's where I'll cut I'm going to use a um, I'll use the uh, Table saw to cut that off and I'll set the angle on the table saw so All right, so I've already marked this, but I'll show you where where I'm going to be cutting all the wood off. So, using the speed square, which is a really handy tool, uh, I figured about four inches off the side is going to get cut off. And speed square is a really handy tool to have around because you can get 90 degree angles very quickly off of other surfaces. So, just mark your line there. And I've decided instead of using a table saw, I'm going to use the circular saw to cut this off as well as the other parts. And I think that'll work just fine. So one of the things you can do when you don't have a uh, an actual sawhorse set up is you can just use some spacers, some plywood spacers, to get your uh, your material off the ground so that your circular saw is not going to cut into the ground. Obviously, you don't want to dull your blade with that. Uh, it's also safer when you've got some odd shaped items that might be hard to keep on a table while you're sawing. Just being closer to the ground, keeping your whole body weight on the material can actually help a lot. I also decided I'm going to do four and three eighths for the uh, the cut off the back of these. So I'm going to change my mark to a four and three eighths. First, you want to measure. Okay, four and three eighths here. All right, so we've got our straight edge lined up. Just need to take this little dowel out. Hopefully it comes up. Oh, nope. Well, this is coming out anyway, so that's all right. I'm cutting that off. Uh, but what you need is for this to be able to get through without hitting anything else on the other side. So I'll have to flip this. And do it on this side and I'll keep my weight on it over here with my knee So pretty straight cut, not too bad. Got to trim off the ends because these are going to need that same four and three eighths part cut off. So what I'm going to do on these, you can see where the particle board, not particle board, but yeah, actually, 
the old particle board that they had used between these two to uh, create a notch and then glue together. Um, I'm going to shave that off and I'm going to glue over this so I'm just going to sand that off really quick as well as that part so that these will end up being flush and then I'll glue them together like that so then these will be met up 100% on the ends there and I'll screw them together put the whatever the dowel things are on from the front of the piano and that'll be good I've got to run to the studio, so I will be back uh, probably tomorrow. Okay, back at it day two here. Um, so what I'm going to do is trim off, uh, just using a chisel, I'm going to uh, trim off any sort of um, bumps or anything from where the old piano came apart where it was glued together. So those are going to create, when you try to put those back together, that particle board has all been fractured. It's never going to fit right back the way it should. Uh, so I'm going to just get that out with a chisel uh, the best I can. And then, uh, then I'm going to start screwing things back together. So I got most of the big bits out and I'm just going to use the orbital um, just to clean up that edge. So I'm just using some 40 grit, 40 grit on the orbital. Sounds pretty good there. All right, so those are pretty clean. And again, these are just going to be a surface to put the uh, side frames on. You can see they're the same length. And on the front side here, that's where the spindles are going to go in, or whatever you call them, from the front of the piano. Um, and these will be on the back side, but these will be hidden by, uh, by the sides. So that'll work. Alright, so just going to use some regular Gorilla wood glue. You can use any wood glue. I mean, for a project like this, where I'm not really concerned about really anything, <laughs> uh, regular old Gorilla wood glue is fine. Uh, these clamps I use when I do coffee tables. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually going to fit. I don't know if it's going to be long enough. And it's not. And so here's here's what's so important is to have pipe clamps because a lot of these clamp sets that you're going to get at a um, you know hardware store are not going to be long enough so i'll show you the set of pipe clamps that i made using some galvanized pipe and uh they you can go you know eight feet or even longer on those so i'll bring those up all right so here's the pipe clamps And I brought out some plywood so that I could um, put these, set them on there. But basically, these pipe clamps are uh, from Bessie, B-S-S-E-Y. And basically, they're real easy to use. Uh, three quarter inch, I think this is OD three quarter. Yeah, three quarter inch galvanized pipe. Um, and I got 16 footers and I cut them down to eight foot. Actually, I cut them down to less than that. I think I cut them down to six foot because I was going to use these, this set for, uh, for just coffee tables that are usually 48 inches long. Um, so they're really easy to set up. Basically, all you need to do is uh, this end here just slides using these tabs. I'll try to show you better. You just pull the friction on those tabs and it'll slide out. So you can set your end there. And then this side, every, every uh, galvanized pipe has threaded, um, has a thread on each end. So you screw this onto the threaded end as your, as your anchor there. And then this is where you push it out or in, right? So you get very close with that end, and then you're going to use this end to tighten it. 
So what I'm going to use these for is just to, when I, when I screw these together, I want these to be uh, in place where I'm going to set those pilot holes straight through the wood um, before I do any gluing. So I want those to be very straight um, and not move around at all. Uh, then I'll take the clamps off, screw them together, or if I can, I'll leave the clamps on to screw, well, no, actually I'll have to, to get the wood glue in, I'll have to take the clamps off, set the glue, and then I'll set the screw, and then I'll clamp it back. A lot of people say, you know, don't, don't screw and glue, uh, but I think it's fine. And especially for a project like this, I really don't care. So I've got these just tight enough now where I can screw and nothing's going to move around and that's what I wanted. I don't want to over tighten that one because it's going to flip it around. I just want to check where I'm at on the other side. And I'm in a pretty good position there on the other side. So this should be good to go. So what I've realized as I'm walking through this, and this is always good to do, uh, I'm realizing that basically this, uh, if I glue that together on the base, uh, I won't be able to get this uh, spindle in because this is gonna go into the, the what's gonna be the bench seat, which is the old really thick piece of wood uh, that was holding the piano uh, keys. Now, I'll have a problem where this is a, this part actually needs to go into that first and then the foot needs to get screwed into the bottom of this. And if I glue this on, I won't be able to take that off. So it's good when you're going through this process, never, you know, never go too quick. Think about every step as you're going and then you'll realize, okay, what, I've, what I really should do in this case is get these pilots set up, uh, get the screws set up so I can put them in and out as I need to. Uh, and then really put the whole thing together, make sure it's all fitting, um, and then I'll glue the foot on last as somewhat of an anchor. Um, and that'll probably work out great. Uh, you could probably get this in and out without having, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say if you can get this in and out without taking the foot off. Uh, but in this case, I'm not going to hopefully ever need to take the foot off after it's all put together anyway, so I'm going to glue it. Alright, just going to do the other side now. I actually want to put the feet on, um, or the spindles in now, and just give that a test run, make sure they're all fitting. So that's fitting okay. And I had to loosen up the back a little bit. Back clamp. To get that in. Uh, but that's good news there. So should be able to screw in underneath here at this point. All right, so I got that slid in. I'm just gonna go through the old screws that I got here from the original piano. And uh, I found one that was of the right size. I don't want it to go in too far. Um, and this should work just fine. All right, 
that's that's tight and I'm just gonna flip this over to the other side and get the top on Alright, so not beautiful the way I just did that, but it's fine. Also, this is why I hate starting and stopping projects on different days. Um, I for almost forgot that I wanted to take I wanted to take a couple inches, not a couple inches, but probably an inch and a half off the foot of these just to lower the overall bench height. And I almost forgot to do that, so I'm going to do that on the table saw. So hopefully you can see a little bit better now. Uh, than before, um, but basically I had to run to the store, and the part that's going to go behind that's going to go behind the backboard there is actually a true one by, um, which is otherwise known as a five quarter board. So think of it as a, a one inch board is uh, is one you know it's four quarters. Um, and then when they cut that down, it's not, it ends up being nominal, so it's less than an actual true one by. So a true one by is five quarters. So four quarters is one plus a quarter, and then they trim it so it's one inch to just, you know, complicate things for no reason. <laughs> so that's how they name boards. Anyways, I knew this dimension behind here was a true one inch, so I'm going to trim this down, put that in the side here, fill in that gap and then we can put our backboard in. Um, I also bought a new countersink bit, which is uh, number six. I uh, couldn't find my other one. This is so that you can drill your pilot holes, and then it also trims out at an angle uh, for your screws to go in and be flush at the end, so it doesn't split your boards by pushing and wedging the board wide. This will drill the pilot for the actual screw to go in, and then basically pull out a little bit of material right around the rim so that that screw can come in flush at the end. Uh, and then I just bought some brackets for the back of, of the backboard. I'll put in two on each side and then I'll put in a board at the end across the back that'll just keep it more firm. So now we're all set up to get our pilot and uh, countersunk uh, pilots drilled in. I knew I had a, a bunch of locations where I wanted to get those put in so I'm going to do that now. Alright, so usually you don't need as many as you might think up front. Um, so all I did was I've got two going through that bracket there. Not bracket, but that piece of wood that's already glued on. So I'm going to go through two there, one up top through the bottom of the, the bench board, uh, one coming up into the bottom of this board. Rather than going through the whole meat of it, I'm actually just going to do one through here. Um, and again, that doesn't need a whole lot because there's all the pressure of the weight of the, um, the bench sitting on that anyways. So this is really just extra because the glue is going to hold most of it anyways. One more up top there. Um, that way it's not overdone and it's pretty easy to take apart if I need to. 
So I'm just going to use two inch construction screws. Um, that might be a little bit long for what I need, but again, I'm not too concerned about things getting um, popped through or anything like that. And this will make it really strong. Um, and they have a star bit on them. So I'll put those in now. Those are nice and snug. I'm gonna take the pipe clamps off now. Let's just put the uh, screw back in the end of it so I don't lose it. So that's good there. So now I want to trim off about an inch and a half off the base. Um, should be fine just to lower the overall height of the whole thing uh, just by that overall dimension. Uh, there sh still should be plenty of wood down there to keep everything stable uh, between the spindle and the back. So that should be good. You can see where my pilots came through from the other piece of wood through that uh, countersink screw. So looking good there. I'm just going to use a table saw to take the end, uh, inch and a half off each. So you can see where um, this was glued together. And the total dimensions of this piece of wood, so I'm actually not going to end up doing an inch and a half because it'll land too close to one of the, the seams that was there and glued together. So what I'm going to end up doing is I want to basically split the difference on this whole thing. So it's about two and, well, hard to say, two and three quarters or so. Uh, so I'm going to try to just split the difference. And in the end, I'll probably end up just going with a little bit more than less. So I'll probably do an inch and three eighths. Uh, so that'll end up in a pretty good spot. We'll still have plenty of, of uh, wood left. Okay, so I've got the table saw set up and I want to take off about that inch and three eighths or so off the low side. And so I've got everything set up. Make sure you've got your guides on and make sure that everything's functioning properly and use your, use your push so that you don't put your hand through there. And if you've got something that's weird like this, you want to do the low side first. Uh, so bring in the, the more meatier part of the wood and push from here. Um, and also make sure you're cutting off the side that you want to have cut off. This is the side that's going towards the piece. This is the side that's getting cut off. So unfortunately, the safety gear was too tight, even with the blade all the way up, it was just too tight to run this through without ha with having the safety gear on. So I'm going to have to run it through without that on. So I've got my safety glasses on and just going to run this through and be very, very uh, cautious about it. for the blade to completely stop and make a piece. So that's our total depth at the bottom now, which is perfect for what I'm hoping for. Still have everything we need as far as connecting everything and all of our pilot holes and everything are still there. Okay, so after 
taking a look at how much depth I had and looking at how well these were coming out. Had a couple stops there, but overall it went pretty smooth. I ended up going with an even sh more shallow dimension to get the, the overall bench height lower. Uh, so I ended up trimming off some more pieces. So here's the two pieces cut. And again, it, I had a couple stops on each one of them where I was sl too slow on the blade, but I was being very careful without the safety, without all the safety precautions on the actual unit because it was too thick to keep all those on. So you always have to be very careful when you're using a uh, table saw like that with no safeties on top. Uh, but overall, really pleased with it. They look great. So I'm gonna start putting things together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up where it was and screw it on there first and then I'll line up the other part with the clamps, get everything clamped together. But I wanna get it generally lined up first before I put any glue on it. So here's my piece. Just gonna go ahead and put some glue on. That should be plenty, it'll press in. So I'm gonna screw in and then I'll clamp. Actually I'll clamp and then I'll screw it in. Alright, so that's pretty good. So I'll leave, I'll leave that to set there and then I'll do the other side now. Um, things are changing as I go because not every initial part of my plan is exactly working out, but in the end it'll still be fine. It's just not exactly what I had planned. Um, but again, it's a bench. We're not building a skyscraper, so it's okay if it's not perfect. Okay, so I use these uh, inch and a quarter deck screws for the um, the two little blocks that were pre-glued on from the old piano to drill back down in. They just had to be shorter so they didn't come through the foot with all that extra material trimmed off the foot. Um, so the glue should be set. It's not going to be cured yet, but it'll be set at this point. Um, so I'm going to flip this up and start working on the back. some bracing in the back but overall not too bad um, so I think it's pretty stable at this point those big screws that went in through here were were important I'll probably end up just to stabilize it more I'll put some L brackets on the back behind the uh, going in this direction uh, to stop any more wobbling because uh, there's gonna be a little bit and I'll probably put another one underneath underneath this as well just to keep, try to tie it together a little bit and if needed I'll put something across the, the back by the floor level uh, just to tie it together but so far so good so this is going to be the back piece here and the plan was to trim off a little bit here at the top I'm going to put the one bys in to fill that gap there trim off the top and then you'll have the back section there 
All right, so I've got my table saw set up there. Let me make some room. Um, the next cut I'm going to do is to cut this an inch and a half up from where it was um, at an angle to track that angle just to keep the top a little bit flush. I could plane it in position or instead just have it, uh, have it cut at the angle on the table saw. So I'm going to move the angle of the table saw and it doesn't need to be perfect so I'm just going to eyeball it. And it's probably off of 90, probably about 10 degrees or so. So now starting at three inches in, and I'm going to check it once I roll this up here, but should be right on <coughs> to run this through. I'm going to run it up actually the other direction to trim back that way, and it should run through no problem, uh, and we'll get the right dimensions on it. You got to move, bud. Come here, come here. Come on. Move, move, move. Good boy. We'll end up putting some sort of a trim board across the top in the back anyways, so that'll make it look a little nicer. Uh, maybe I'll use the old piano lid. So I just want to cut this board right at that edge using a chop saw. And then I'll use this piece. Well, I guess I should do both sides. Um, I might end up using the remainder of the board in the middle as a bracing member. We'll see. Alright, so I'm going to chop those two pieces off and then without them being up against the the workpiece, I'm going to drill um, and actually use a countersink bit to pilot those in so that when I drill it into the side of this, it doesn't split the poplar. So always keep in mind when you're cutting a board that you want to cut to your waste material where the blade goes through, you want to cut to make sure that you're not actually cutting on the line. You want to cut just to the left of it or to the right of it, depending on which side you're on. Um, but you basically want to make sure that you don't cut too much off of that because that line, that blade, is about an eighth of an inch or more, depending on the blade you're using, that'll remove that material. Just want to countersink a few holes in there. These, this doesn't need to be, this isn't holding any weight. It's not load bearing on the, on the piece. So really these are just to anchor, just to anchor this wood up against this side panel here. So I'm just gonna use this as a little workbench. I'm just going to use these inch and a quarter deck screws 
because I've got them and I'm not going to probably use them for anything for a while. So I might as well use them. Again, I don't really care about the aesthetic. And this will actually brace up the piece a little bit, which is nice. And always check to make sure you're not going to go too deep on your workpiece and pop out the other side. But I should be about a half inch clear when it's all the way drilled in. pretty good. The main thing is I want to cover up this hole right underneath there and give it enough room. So we do as 12 inches. So 12 and a half. Should have brought my impact drill, but it's at the shop. All right, and then two more brackets down below, and that should be good. So I've got this extra piece of poplar, and what I'm gonna use it for is to brace the back, um, and I can drill right into these pieces, which would be nice. Uh, the new popular poplar pieces. Um, all these are all connected now. So I'm just going to drop this piece in, chop off the end there, put this up back, and then I'm going to use the old lid um, with the hinges to cap this, and when it closes, it'll fold right over that edge. So that'd be pretty cool. So I just need to mark, just need to mark the dimensions here of where I'm going to cut, and we should be good there. There we go. Doesn't even need screws. Um, but I am obviously going to do that. So I want to level these two pieces here so that they're even. So that's pretty close. Good old speed square. Always good. That's pretty good there. So basically what I'll do before, again, I'm gonna use those, um, I'm gonna use the, um, the bit to countersink and then I'll screw in through the back. I will use the longer construction screws for those. Usually I have my impact drill right here I don't right now, so I don't want to lose my mark. The first one's always the most important one. Still level. Luckily, it didn't slide. Oh, 
Perfect. Hello, Mac. Yeah, it's only me. You What's up, worry. Grandpa Dude? You like it? Sure. Thanks. It's not perfect, but... Well, no, it's gonna be... It's pretty cool, though. Really cool. You're on camera. Hey, Grandpa Dude. All What's right. going on? I'm here admiring the craftsmanship. <laughs> Why, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Who did it? <laughs> oh, I, did. did I did. I did it. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did oh, it. Good. <laughs> Shocking, right? It's all done wrong, but it works. Oh, no, it's, I, thought, I thought it was moving. What's that? Well, I stepped on the board and it made oh. it rock a little bit. It's not, it's not that shaky. Um, but yeah, it'll be. Mom was just out here sitting on it. And. Uh, so, said, yeah, on it, so I won't interrupt you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of Give it a test in a sec. Well, actually, we were I'm talking just about. in the back. So, so I'm, I cannot say. See, this is this is a fine, a perfect okay. height for me. Hey, heads up for one second. Yeah, no, I just. No, yeah, you can sit down. You can sit back oh, down yeah, now. That was good enough. Um, what I was really seeing is when I sat down. The height, right? What did it feel like in terms of my feet touching the ground? And good. Yeah, I think the height's good, and I got the. I feel like I got the depth pretty well done. Yeah. Well, that is what it is. You want to have the back slanted a little bit for sure. Yeah. Is yeah. that hole drilled by you? That was from the original piano. I was going to say, I didn't know if you, what the purpose might be. Actually, maybe what I'll do, maybe I'll use the old lid for this. I'm going to use them as that. What was your original thought? Well, what I'll probably do now is, maybe I'll use these. You're going to have to back it off though. No, I know. But I'm thinking maybe I'll put the lid on and then cut out. I don't know. Well, yeah, what I was. You, yeah, your back's got to go here. No, I know. That's what I was saying. I, I could. I, I wasn't planning on doing it this way, but yeah, right. I could cut out the lid like that. Or what I was thinking of doing is having these hinges. Yeah, that's what I was wondering what the original was. Coming this way. So that it opens up. It doesn't go anywhere, but it opens up. Yeah. You know, just to just for the effect of these. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's your second thought because you just laid it down. Yeah. Will look better. And um, you just think about how you want to cut it out, and you know, leave have this part, the finished part, be in the front. Yeah. To is to put this. Cut off these, so this will be square cut at the end. Cut off the two ends, and then just have this nice finished piece on the front, and then it'll open up. It won't go anywhere, but it'll it'll just cover this. It'll cover this edge. Yeah. You know. Resting on here, you got a space to make up. No, here. no. I, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put separate caps on these. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, probably what I'll do, I'll use these caps. So I'll cut it. Put those caps on and drill them in. Yeah. And then I'll have just the smaller lid there. Okay. Well, that look cool. I'm making comments. I've stimulated some conversation, but you know, think it through a couple times. Yeah. Because you're coming up with some pretty good ideas, and then you know, you, because this is this is finished, you want to use that. Yeah. And not lose it, and so you can figure out how you want to do it. All right, we are back at it. What's going on, Mac? What's going on? What are you doing? So, um, Max helping out, he's chilling. Uh, so back at it, a little bit cold out today. Um, so basically, have a couple finishing touches that I wanna put on this thing to, to finish the top area. Um, not a whole lot there, to be honest, but um, what I, was, I wanted to cap the back off somehow, have this covered up somehow. Uh, what I was gonna initially use was these two strips 
and uh, I looked at them and they're just not they're not the best and I've got other another piece that will actually work better than those and I think I'd already talked last time about using the old the old top for the edges so the old piano top here used for the edges so I'm gonna uh, basically cut the back cut the back off of this uh, to make it only this long and then just trim the edge and then I'll countersink a, a screw right in not countersink but I'll do a countersink um, hole and then put the screw in through the top of the new wood so it doesn't split out and that'll cap the ends and then this piece will all be waste wood in the middle um, or waste material the other thing that I'm going to do is use this piece of wood this block as a spacer behind the backboard here so really just to space the wood out, make sure the back is firm here. So that's just gonna keep these two pieces spaced out. Uh, one other thing I'm doing is putting a piece of wood along the back here, just to hold the back of the, um, the backboard in place so it doesn't warp over time. So those are the main bits that I'm working on and I'll get started. That's easy enough there, right in the middle. I'll measure it. So our total width was about, uh, let's see, 58, so that's 29. Somewhere in the range of 29 in the center. So I'll scoot it over just a little bit. Is that right? Of course, it's starting to rain now, like always. Finally get some time to work on this and it starts raining. Check my depth, yeah, we should be good there. Oh, I forgot these are star bits, of course. Good. So those are so the back is set. I'm gonna do one more. I'll do one in the middle on the back here at an angle, and then one on each side. That should be all right. So don't put pressure on the tip of this. You need to get in first because if you put pressure in at an angle. You'll crack the tip right off. I'm gonna center this on the back here. So start a little more vertical and then push straight in. Oh, kind of strip stripped that a little bit. This is why the impact drill is so good to have. need to look nice on the back or anything so that is looking good so just gonna cut the top parts and uh, I might put one more brace across the back just to keep it from wobbling probably just use some regular old 2x4 for that and uh, then we should be pretty good and one thing I forgot to show was what I'm planning to do for the lid on the front so the old piano still you know, all this wood is going to be about the same length, which is nice. So what I'm going to do for the lid up top is take this part off, but use those hinges. So these three hinge sets, I'm going to screw right on to the face of this, and then this will open. It doesn't do anything, but 
it'll be there, it'll look nice and it's finished on the front. So that'll look pretty cool. So first what I'll do to cut the top, I just need to get the depth down. So I'm gonna cut the back off. I'm just gonna mark that right now all the way along the back for my cut line. Heads up, Mac. So I know the depth I want to get to. And this whole back is just going to go off on the table saw. Uh, so that should be pretty easy to do. And then I'll cut in this direction to just make these little caps. Okay, so it's starting to rain, but I think I'll still be able to get this done before anything crazy happens. So just gonna run this piece through in the back. On the back side, I took the screws off that were here. Um, so I'm gonna cut it with this side up because I want to keep these in. And I'm just gonna eyeball exactly where it is visually for the fence on the back side. It doesn't have to be exact, but again, leave that like eighth of an inch or so for the blade. Make sure your fence is locked in place, otherwise you're going to skirt your cut. So let's just check the depth here. Right, a little bit, actually that's right on. That's where I want it. Good. Alright. Close. So I'm gonna use my pencil just to get the line what I want to cut off here. And I'm just going to use the chop saw for these cuts. So I'm going to leave a little bit of extra on there. Make sure you don't hit your, uh, your screw there. Just enough just enough to get it all the way through that piece. Someday I'm gonna invest in a chop saw that extends out so I can do longer pieces without having to figure out a table saw. So I'm gonna use this as a reference to be honest. Got the other marks but we should be all right. It's gonna be... Uh, getting a little bit of damage on the top, that sucks, whatever. I'd inflict it. So, you can see those are the same length, that's good. They're same width anyways. But what happened, because I was cutting from the other side, whatever, it's fine, adds character. All right, so got our caps, and I'm just gonna drill those in. And they're not like the sexiest things ever, but it makes it look sort of from the side like the piano. This part's gonna be unfinished on the inside, so someday when you know when I have time, I'll figure out a way to make it look nicer on the inside where there's all the unfinished parts. But the main thing is I just want to get this inside somewhere, inside the studio, so that it's not, um, it 
it's not getting damaged in the weather, which has been, which I kind of like that it's getting a little weather damaged, but it, it's not like fine wood, you know? So it's starting to flake and not be as cool as it once could have been. There's a certain amount of patina that's cool, and then there's a diminishing return on that patina. Alright, so that's cool there. Get two screws right into right into the meat of the uh, the newer wood. So straight down here, I'll do two of them. And that should do it actually for that part. And then I'll just screw the new lid on. I've, I've got to trim the back off. Actually, I don't even have to trim the back off the new lid, the the part, the original uh, hinge part, because that's going to fit actually right on. All I need to do is sing a couple screw uh, screws right into the the hinge, and we should be good. Alright, so, that one's on there, this one's here. I'm just going to eyeball these because I really don't mind. And it's not going to be perfect, and that's fine. The other thing is I don't want to run into the screws that are below it. So. So, this is what it looks like up top. Just two right through, and I'll put the construction screws in there. And again, I'm not doing this to be, um, you know, a fine piece of work. It's gonna be a fun piece of work. A little different. So we put in our two, whatever you wanna call them, cap screws, I guess you could call them. And I'll leave it kinda loose to the okay. this one a little bit more there we go all right cool so that's one end you know it's not the sexiest looking thing ever but it's like a finished piece you know sort of <laughs> kind of and it'll it'll be just fine as far as what I'm trying to get at so I'll do the same thing right here I want to be about even as far as the depth. Okay, all right, so those end caps, as I'm calling them, are in. So last step is gonna be to take the, uh, the old Lowry uh, piano key lid piece off, uh, off, screw it off, and then I'm actually gonna pre-drill the holes. Um, I'll just use the countersink drill bit for that and put it on the top. So it should be, uh, or put on that little lid thing. Should be good. Screws out, make sure you don't lose them. There you go, keep them in your pocket. So there is our little lid piece. So it looked pretty cool. So what I just found out is my um, my wedge block on the back is too big, and it's actually warping the wood out a little bit, so I can't screw them all in. So I'm gonna take that block out and put this part on, kind of bend it on, and then uh, I'll have to trim down this this piece of wood, I'm going to shave off a little bit. So I got those out. There we go. 
Right. So that was just giving it too much, um, too much bend. It was warping it out. So the middle set of screws were matching up, but then the outside ones were not. And now we're a lot closer. Oops. Let's see. So the middle set of screws is going to have to push in a little bit, but that'll be all right. Yeah, that should be okay. So now this little lid piece will uh, will work. funny these screws are almost like cabinet screws this will fit but it's gonna be tight uh, so I just I don't want to strip them so I gotta be careful so don't have a smaller set with me Oop. Oh, see there you go that's a good way to lose all your screws this is magnetized <laughs> so just put took them all out of my pocket well, Should be okay. We've got them. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Still got them. Still got them all. Should probably just do this by hand, but whatever. If I don't do it by hand, I'm going to strip them, so. Alright, so I'm going to hand screw these on. This, uh, I've got like a hundred of these little Husky, they're reversible, and they've got two sizes, so they're actually really handy because if you need bigger on the other side, you've got it. So, pretty handy. But I want to hand screw these in because otherwise I'm going to strip them. Heads up, Mac. Heads up, buddy. Heads up. Heads up. You're right in the way. I know. I know. So sometimes you'll end up having a real bad day if you strip a screw and also it won't look good. This is on the technically on the finished side of the piece. So somebody would look at it and be like, oh this guy blew through all the blew through all of his screws and stripped them. So I guess this is all permanent. <laughs> You can feel there's a little bit of wobble in this thing, so um, I'm definitely going to put another brace on the bottom across the back. Alright, so with those on, this is going to have to pull back a little bit on the other parts, but that should be fine. So once they're all in, it'll be good. So this is a sort of, I put that one in all the way so that it would um, stabilize the other one so they don't, so I don't get out of sync. Let's see what we've got. And I don't get out of alignment is the right word. So I always use my thumb to sort of level that out, get towards the center. Let that thumb help guide it. Alright, so those are all good. We'll get these in and then we'll have to bend the whole piece towards the middle. Um, or towards the other side to get the other side in because the wood's a little bit warped from being outside. And here comes the wind. Being out on Cape Cod, you end up getting a lot of crazy weather. A lot of wind, you get a lot of rain coming in out of nowhere, sometimes right off the water. Alright, so that's good. 
and set. The moment of truth. Let's see if it opens. Aha, there you go. Cool, and then if you gotta put your beer down, there you go. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so, uh, so that's pretty well done. So I think, not well done, but it's done. Uh, so main things that I'm gonna figure out in another video probably is the what to do like I just said I'm gonna probably stain that top piece and then I gotta figure out what to do with that gap which whatever it's not a biggie but uh, and I'll put on the last piece of bracing on this video on the back we'll do that now so I almost forgot we've got to trim this block down this block was too thick and it was pushing the wood out so um, so I'm just gonna cut an arbitrary amount off. I think I'll probably do about a quarter inch and I'll do it on the table saw. Well, you know what? Small piece of wood, that's always kind of tough. What I'm going to do is make it smaller. I'm going to make it shorter and then I'll chop saw it. That way I'm not running it through the table saw and trying to cut my finger off. So the brace doesn't need to be that big. Um, or the blocker doesn't need to be that big. So I'm just going to use a chop saw. It's safer. Running a really thin piece of wood or a short piece of wood through a table saw can be really dangerous if you don't do it right. So I'm just going to cut off this weird end here so it's shorter and then just use this block and then I'm going to cut it lengthwise just by holding it up like that. Alright, there's our block. Now I want to cut off, you know, I want to get it so it's on the, on the board on both sides so it doesn't wobble and just enough to take off that amount that I'm looking to take off. That's probably about right. So a little more than what I'm wanting but it's okay. Alright, so there's our piece. That's what we took off. There's our waist. So probably three eighths of an inch, not a quarter, but whatever. Right. I'm gonna slide this piece in behind it. And I can see in right here. Centered on the hinge, so I'll use that one, and then I'll do, drill a new one right here. that one. This one's pre-drilled, uh, not into the block, but should be okay. These construction screws are pretty strong. They'll, with the teeth on the end of them, they'll cut into anything. Alright, so that's on. So now we've got a firm back. Hopefully this still works no problem. It does. Only issue is this is about an eighth of an inch shorter, but honestly it's the back. I don't think it really matters at all. No one's really gonna see it, and the height of this sort of blocks that anyways. So, that's all right, worked out. And uh, so I'm just gonna put one more piece of blocker, not blocker, but bracing across the back, like I did with the top piece. And I'm gonna try to find just an old piece of wood that I can use that I don't need for anything else. And a two by four would be nice, but this thing's gonna be heavy, I'll tell you that much. Really heavy, <laughs> but whatever. It's cool though, it's definitely cool, and once it's there, it's not going to move. Um, so yeah, I think the best spot to do it is probably going to be right about here. So I can drill into the back here and into the side here. And it'll snug up right underneath that newer piece of wood there. 
So I need to find a piece that's that width, which I might have some already from this project because that's the length of the difference between these two pieces of wood already. But it might not actually. We'll see. So what I found was a piece of primed trim board, which actually is gonna be fine. It's not as strong as a two by four, but it'll sort of accomplish the main gist of what I'm trying to do, which is just to stop the rocking. Um, so it's a little bit long, but just need to trim it down. So we should be able to just cut that end off. And this is, I think this is the factory end. So I don't want to cut the factory end. That's always straight. Cut the end that's already been cut before, which is this end, um, I believe. They're both actually kind of straight, so either I did a good job cutting the last one. Hey, stop eating the wood. Stop eating the wood. Alright, that's what I want to cut. Heads up, Mac, you're in the way again, bud. Sorry. Heads up, heads up. Heads up. You gotta move. You gotta move. Move, move, move. Move, move, move. Move, move, Good, that'll add on some extra extra strength. So just do some uh, pre-drills and then we should be good. I'm gonna do the corners. If you couldn't see any of that. So just again you want to start sort of straight straight on and then turn. Get your hole going and now turn. And I'm gonna use smaller screws for these so I don't go out the other side. Almost used, the, almost used the long ones. That would have been bad. Mess up the whole outside. All right, so these are one and a quarter, and they shouldn't pop through. But if they do, whatever. Just, I think it should be fine though. At that angle, we should be good. Yep, we're good. Okay, just with the, the side parts help keep it more firm, but the just this being a straight cut on both ends and then being attached to the back of the really strong uh, center piece of wood that you sit on is enough to keep it from rocking back and forth anyways. Uh, but yeah, overall, you know, for being a project that originally I was going to turn this into a little cabinet, 
now it's a cool bench. So that's pretty firm, pretty sturdy. Not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, anyways, I'll sit on it and say thank you guys for watching. And I'm glad that this piano bench came together in a pretty interesting way. And Mac, you were great. Thank you, buddy. My, uh, my mother was there in the beginning. That was a few weeks ago. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll try to edit this so it's not too painful to watch, uh, but it's fun. And if you take a, an old piano and, you know, if it's going to go in the dumpster, otherwise you turn it into something cool. So thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, Dempsey TV, subscribe. Sub somewhere over there, subscribe. There'll be more, a lot more fun stuff coming. All right, see ya.